Greetings and welcome back to Smartwatch Ticks, where we're continuing to explore this amazing Lympho LEM7 Android 7 standalone smartwatch phone. And today we're going to talk about connectivity, in particular, the 4G LTE voice and data connectivity that this watch is supposed to support. Now, here's how clear this is going to be. This is actually a watch face. If you can tell the time, look carefully. If you can tell the time, then you probably can understand what I'm about to tell you. If it all looks like zigzags to you, don't worry. You have to soften your eyes and open your mind for this stuff to make sense. It's the only way I could get it. What time is it really? 2.04.02. Oh, 04 seconds. Or actually, colon, I think, a flashing colon. Can you see the time? Really? Come on, soften your eyes. It's right there. Okay, look, get, get back a little further. Get, get closer. Ah, we'll do it again at the end. Maybe then you'll see it. All right, <laughs> we got to tell you that this watch is from Banggood. These guys are getting a lot of pump up on this one because I'm doing a lot of videos on the Lim 7. And it's worth it too. Uh, check the show notes for the buying link to pick this one up. Support our sponsors, helps us support you. And we got one of the first ones hot off of the press because they know that you guys like these watches and help them out. All right, with that said, let's dive in here now. I have an AT&T 4G LTE SIM in this watch right now. Some of what I'm about to tell you is going to be really specific to AT&T in the USA. Other parts are something you might use no matter where you live. And still even more, this is specific to this particular 4G LTE watch. However, it may apply to other similar 3G and 4G watches if you're trying to get connectivity and it just isn't happening for you. So let's look here at the specs. This says that it's a GSM, a WCDMA, and an LTE, more acronyms. GSM is the 2G band. AT&T discontinued that at the end of 2016. I think T-Mobile still supports it, but that's like really lame. That's like basic modem, your original 2400 baud modem capability, but these frequencies are supported. The WCDMA, usually you see uh, 850, 1900, and 2100 numbers uh, for 3G. Now they're going to these bands, B1, 2, and 5. I don't know. It's as easy as reading time to me. Then you get to the LTE, FTD, B1's band, 3, 5, 7, and 20 are supported. That is even... Okay, that's like that. That's... The, that's... Yeah. Someday I'll understand this. Hopefully you already do. And if you're green as I am, uh, we'll learn together. Is the USA in here or not? We're about to find out. Uh, Canada? Uh, China? Australia? We hear good results from a lot of these watches down under. Um, but they got to turn their watches this way to read the time. Let's go further. Um, no, no, not yet. I'm going to show you the next document after we explore this. Thank goodness I got away from that. Oh, my eyes are going screwy. You're going to go over here to settings. You know, this is your app drawer area, and you're going to go into settings. After you put your SIM card in, after you reboot your watch, you're going to go in here. You're going to find the connection. You're going to go all the way down to cellular networks, and you're probably going to find to your dismay that some of this stuff is all set up wrong. There's preferred networks. When you come in here, there's a whole list of them. And if you're on AT&T, this is where you're specific, you're going to want to select the AT&T 4G as your option. If it works, it's going to be able to um, fail back to 3G and supposedly 2G, uh, if it doesn't work, if it does work, you should be able to get connectivity. When I came in, brand new on this watch, it was set for 2G down here. It's the preferred network type. So go into your preferred networks and select 4G. Make sure your enhanced 4G LTE mode is turned on. Why? I have no idea. What happens if you don't have it turned on? I don't know. I'm just saying. Just saying. 
Then you get to the access point. Okay, now, if you're on LG, it's supposed to be this AT&T Net Next Generation Phone Wi-Fi that you want selected. So select that one, and hopefully you're going to be in business, okay? Now, with your other phone companies, I don't know. You're probably going to have to explore with them what, uh, what was that thing called? An APN, right? What your access point name needs to be. But I'm going to show you something in just a second that may help. Um, but these are the ones that are pre-installed in the watch. And so you're going to be selecting something in here. And most of them are set for AT&T in the version I got here in the USA. So get creative. Get with your carrier. You remember, your carrier has to, has to be on the GSM network. It's not going to work if it's on Verizon or Sprint. They use CDMA. Yeah, clear as the, as the watch face. GSM network is a must. 3G, 4G is a must. And beyond that, it's a rocket science. So after we've done all of that stuff, I'm going to reboot the phone by going in here and hitting reboot. Now, while it reboots, remember that APN we were talking about? Let me show you this. One of our viewers uh, trying to get connectivity to the X86 watch, which is supposed to be a 3G watch, posted this in the comments. Thank you, guys. Really, every time you come in and you give us a tidbit of information, it's so helpful to so many people. My head can only hold so much, and it's already oozing out my ears. So I need your help in figuring this stuff out. If you want to do 3G and 4G, uh, and this tells you that AT&T, blah, blah, and T-Mobile, blah, blah. But when you get down, you get to AT&T, and you set this APN to try and get 3G connectivity. That's a 3G watch, not 4G. Set the name like this. That's us booting up over here. Put it on screen as it comes up. APN is phone and so forth. Leave a lot of this stuff blank. This is important. You want that for your MMSC. You want the proxy set to proxy.mobile.att.net. This port stuff needs to be there. And then this default supple MMS hipric. Hipri. 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 Um, and the rest of the stuff just leave blank and blah, blah, blah. So when you set that APN, and you select those things I was showing you before. Uh, if that next-gen thing doesn't work, uh, try creating this one in your watch. Or if you don't have it, uh, whatever 3G or 4G watch you have, try connecting using this. Reboot with your SIM card in. Let it all settle down. And then try and make a phone call. See if the phone call will work. If that works, try data. And that's what we're going to go to next. Okay, we're done with that. Y'all caught up? Great. We're back here. What time is it? What time is it? Come on. Come on. Ah. 2.11. Don't you see it? 0 2 one, one. One, one. You got it? See the 11? Okay. Here I go. Look, it says I'm on 3G. Doggone it. That's what happened the first time I did this. And, um... Even though it's a 4G watch, it appears that I guess these frequencies, B1, 3, 5, 7, and 20, none of those are correct for the USA. But hopefully it's working for you elsewhere. Well, what do I have? I'm going to go in here and verify that I have cellular data turned on and I have Wi-Fi turned off. Okay, then I'm going to go over here and I've installed... Another app down here. Isn't that sweet how smooth this scrolls? Whee! Speed test. There it is. Very last thing. I'm going to come into speed test. By the way, that dot that's on here is from Floating Toucher, which I use to uh, navigate. If you haven't seen it before, you touch the dot, and it puts this circle up here, and I can touch there, and I can get the listing of all of my apps that are installed on the watch, and I can pick them all out alphabetically if I want to. Um, really, really sweet thing, um, and I use it all the time, and um, we'll talk about it later when we get into a lot of detail. And my goodness. Okay, I'm back there. Now, what I'm going to do is press and hold the dot and make it disappear so it won't annoy us. We're in speed test. We're on 3G connectivity, it says, and I'm going to begin test. 
This is an older version of Speed Test that looks good on a watch. If you can't get this out of the Google Play Store, I've got a place I'll tell you about. You can go and down, got a link for you to go and download the earlier version of it, and uh, you'll get it'll look better on the on a watch. So I'm getting ha, 0.49 megabits. Sometimes I get about a half uh, a megabit, and sometimes I get as high as three, three and a half. And the upload isn't even working. Look at that; it timed out. So right now, holding it here flat to the ground with the cell over there and all that stuff, I'm not getting uh, I'm not getting good connectivity. Other times it's okay, but I am getting data and it's not 2G. So the 4G fails back on this watch to 3G successfully without having to put this APN thing in there. And I'm lukewarm happy. I wish it were 4G in the USA. And if it is for any of you guys, because I'm in rural America, those of you in urban USA may have totally different frequencies and it might work for you. Let us know in the show notes, okay? So what about um, a phone call if we're doing this whole 4G, 3G thing? Well, I'm placing a call right now from a uh, test phone, and we're going to check it out. I answer the call, and now I'm going to speak right into the phone. Hello? Hello. Testing, one, two. Can you hear that? It's nice and loud. Of course, I've got it right up to my mouth. If I'm a little bit further away, and I know this is hard to do because I'm loud and... I've got the I've got the watch as close as I can get for the phone. Uh, anyway, from my perspective here, if I had this on my wrist, it would be adequate to carry on a phone call, um, and I probably could uh, either talk normal or a little bit loud. I don't think I need to hold it very close because I've tested it with Mrs. Tix, and she can hear me holding it on my arm at regular distance. And if you can hear successfully... It's loud enough for me to hear, and I'm backed off a bit of a ways away. So hopefully you're hearing the audio coming through as well. So on AT&T, the back fall, fall back to 3G for phone is working fine. So by way of summary here, am I ready to summarize? I think so. When you get your SIM card in there, it should show up with the signal strength and either 3G or 4G right there. We've talked about how you go into the settings and through the settings, you get down into the connectivity. Gosh, there's a lot of apps. Settings, connect, cellular, make sure your preferred network is AT&T 4G, right? And make sure you got your preferred network type as 4G, and your APN, look at that now, it, it's not selected anymore. That's the other really weird thing. Make sure it's selected for the next gen Wi-Fi. Okay, maybe when I rebooted, it took it out. Did it change? Nope, still 3G. That's the best I can help you with so far, because I'm blind leading the blind, and that's blind. Can you see it yet? Come on, what time is it? O two one five, right? Two fifteen p.m. Ha <laughs> ha! I can retire. You've been watching Smartwatch Ticks. This is a quick look at how you get cellular data connectivity over your new Limfo LEM7 and perhaps other 3G and 4G watches messing around with APNs and network topology. Whew. Appreciate your patience sticking with us through here. And if you like this watch, check out the show notes down below. Pick it up from Banggood. It's fresh on the market. Really cool watch. We'll see you again soon. More to come.